Good afternoon. My name is Dana Tomescu. I am a professor of anesthesiology and critical care in Bucharest, Romania. And my topic today is about the current state of liver transplant anesthesia. These are my disclosures. There is a discrepancy between the number and need of liver grafts, which remains significant, but with a change of landscape, we transplant less HCV and HCC. We have transplanted more alcoholic liver disease and NASH, but also acute and chronic liver failure that becomes a challenging information uh, indication and also is a very important healthcare burden for the uh, healthcare system. We also transplant sicker patients and it is important to see if and assess and define a futility of liver transplantation. What about the emergency of a transplantation for acute liver failure? The landscape has also changed because of the new uh, therapies and because of the new improvement in critical care. In Scotland, it seems that the patients without transplant or transplanted are dying in the same uh, proportion for patients with acute liver failure. And a very interesting review showed that in 2024, maybe the acute liver failure becomes a curable disease. On one side, transplanting patients is in the era of decreasing number of organs and increasing number of marginal grafts, things that are very challenging for the anesthesiologist. For the COVID-19 pandemics, we have also a decrease in the number of transplant performed, but also a very high workload for the anesthesiologist that had to face performing organ donation, performing in liquid transplantation and taking care of those patients. On the other side, we are transplanting sicker patients, which are old, frail, and very sick with more comorbidities and organ failures, with rapid changing scenarios and with other indications. My plan is to assess a little bit of the preoperative uh, uh, um, assessment to address the intraoperative monitoring and some uh, issues of it, and to speak a little bit about the futility of transplantation. The evaluation of liver transplant patients is crucial for a successful liver transplant needing a dedicated team with an experienced cardiologist and with a complete evaluation and diagnosis of rare syndrome and a timely reassessment because the condition may worsen before transplantation. We're using the MELD uh, sodium score and we're uh, allowing more patient, more points for uh, the uh, waiting list for acute liver failure, primary graph non-function and hepatocellular carcinoma in a dynamic landscape. For patients who have uh, acute liver failure and acute chronic liver failure, we're talking about uh, leading them to transplantation, bridging them to transplantation or to liver recovery with a few liver assist devices. But nowadays we know that uh, <clears throat> the main uh, RCT studies showed no improvement using those uh, devices like the Mars and Prometheus compared to standard medical therapy. Plasma exchange might be uh, an option. And there are some new strategies developed with lead machines combining endotoxin or cytokine absorbers with uh, hemofiltration. For acute liver failures, there are some guidelines supporting the plasma exchange and the uh, early use of this in order to um, assist patients, which maybe will not ultimately undergo liver transplantation. The evaluation for liver transplantation consists of evaluation of the organs that are affected by the end-stage liver disease. The heart can be affected directly by the liver cirrhosis or can be, uh, can be uh, a disease itself. The evaluation has, be, has to be done by an experimental cardiologist familiar with liver disease. He should diagnose a cardiomyopathy Using TEE is very useful to assess cardiomyopathy and uh, there are some um, uh, diagnostic tools and criteria that are uh, used lately. Patients with liver, liver disease are often coronary uh, patients and it's important to have a brief assessment between before transplantation because there are changes uh, from the including on the waiting list. And uh, we should also think that patients with TIPS 
can have diastolic dysfunction, heart failure, and uh, high, uh, pulmonary hypertension. And this uh, uh, disease can be reversible after liver transplantation. What about the lungs? The refractory uh, hepato, hepatic hydrothorax, hepatopulmonary syndrome, and uh, portopulmonary uh, hypertension are some of the main and I think rare but very important um, uh, conditions uh, in liver uh, transplant patients. All those are assessed by simple monitoring and by sophisticated techniques, and they have to be diagnosed because they impact uh, negatively the prognosis. And we have patients that can die in the OR with those conditions. Heart failure can uh, cure if the right ventricle is impaired. Transesophageal uh, echography is mandatory. ECMO has lately been used and improved outcomes, and we can also consider heart liver combined. The kidney has a lot of conditions that are affected directly by the liver. Hepatorenal syndrome with type 1 and type 2 are uh, present, aka frequent in uh, ACLF patients. Chronic kidney disease is common and the combined liver kidney transplant can be performed. We should know that renal replacement therapy is performed prior or during liver transplantation as well, addressing the um, Isodosis, hyperkalemia, volume overload, elevated ammonia, or lactate yeah. levels. The brain in the chronic liver disease or acute liver failure can present with uh, encephalopathy. The brain edema is more common in acute liver failure because of several yeah. causes. Coagulation is one of the main issues, which was um, uh, had a lot of uh, discussions lately. The new theories of coagulation in liver patients change the paradigm regarding the fact that patients are with a bleeding tendency, and we know that they can also uh, undergo thrombotic complications that can be lethal. During the transplantation, the degree of coagulopathy varies widely with the underlying liver disease. Sometimes in high HCC, we do not have any coagulopathy. And we know that we could use a, um, a point of care global discoelastic coagulation test, which assess the clot formation in the whole blood and are useful with a lot of uh, algorithms that were developed. There are some studies regarding the use of um, those um, uh, discoelastic tests with the algorithm and for example, there are the conventional coagulation tests, which are not reflecting the clinical hemostasis, are um, uh, replaced by the vis viscoelastic testing, which, for example, in this study, show to better suit the uh, coagulation status and um, guide transfusion during liver transplant. Using viscoelastic testing show that there are patients that had low levels of fibrinogen or of uh, coagulation factors of plate cells of, uh, or red blood, but they were less transfused with synthetic factors or with uh, FFP or with um, platelets. And the adequate hemostasis could be achieved at low levels of platelet counts, for example, and the transfusion of platelets was minimized in order to minimize also the worst adverse events, which are known to be associated with platelet transfusion. Transfusion, in the, on the other hand, uh, even if, it's, um, if there are a lot of publication, was not um, um, guided in, in guidelines, actually. So there are no guidelines developed so far for liver transplantation or not, no general accepted guidelines, but we know that bleeding during liver transplantation decreases dramatically and there are transplants which are transfusion free because uh, of uh, surgical techniques, because of salvage, because of algorithms, because of uh, FFP, uh, less transfusion uh, performed, because of synthetic use of synthetic factors, because of uh, uh, minimizing uh, platelet transfusion based on the uh, data, and knowing that lowering transfusion has an impact uh, on, uh, on outcomes. Hemodynamic monitoring. The still remaining uh, pulmonary arterial catheter is a golden center, but the T is coming back and uh, there are also some minimally invasive um, devices that are used lately. 
that he, he a position paper of SADA published uh, in uh, 2020 was uh, uh, showed that TE becomes more frequently used in liver transplantation and it's a use and safe tool that might improve outcomes. And he is most, the most direct measurement of cardiac feeling that currently exists, allowing the real-time assessment of fluid status during dynamic operations and making the anesthesiologist, uh, anesthesiologist more confident to use, for example, anticoagulants for intracardiac thrombosis or other uh, indications. Anyhow, the use of TE was associated with less transfusion and uh, total uh, infusion fluids with better hemodynamics if the interventions are earlier applied and it doesn't impact anyhow the uh, ICU or uh, hospital stay. A better outcome is using PAC and TEE, but that is uh, has to be proven because it's quite expensive. The minimally invasive uh, 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 monitors showed uh, are PICO, LITCO, and FlowTrack. What about them? Studies comparing the PAC and the FlowTrack Vigileo for oncologic patients show that it's uh, very good, but we're not talking about cirrhotic patients. If we have patients which are more severe with a well score of 25, we, uh, sh uh, you know, the studies show that there is uh, uh, no agreement because it's a bias of 117 liters per uh, minute per meter uh, square meter between the two, two uh, devices. So probably we should forget about it. But I think although the waveform analysis has limited utility in uh, quantitative measurements of cardiac output, we should also assess the fluid responsiveness by the parameters like SVD and PVD. So I think we should um, use them with uh, if we have the experience and if we're targeting the correct patient with the correct tool. We should fear about the postural perfusion syndrome. I'll not insist about that. I will say that there are uh, new um, advances about, uh, let's say, the uh, ERAS protocol because we liver transplantation is in the ERAS era, as major surgeries are. And um, it is a uh, very interesting study showing that ERAS is another trend for major surgery. And the six year perspective cohort study of 236 patients showed that they were extubated uh, except for four patients with a lower transfusion rate, uh, with an uh, early extubation, median length of stay in ICU of half a day, and a very short length of stay with no readmission. That's very promising. The early extubation in the ICU anyhow is um, uh, one step in an ERAS protocol, and it is performed by some anesthesiologists, but some are still reluctant because probably they are uh, afraid to fly because uh, there is a learning curve, and because sometimes uh, having melt points instead of optimizing the patient and preparing it for surgery is more important. So we are preparing the patient for surgery. Probably we have a better outcome at the end of surgery. We can uh, extubate him earlier and uh, to fast track the patient. Anyhow, early extubation should not be considered that uh, um, for each patient because each patient is unique and we have to challenge the local clinical habits and beliefs, and it needs a focus and the team and promote leadership for persons who want to change things. What about liver transplantation for acute and chronic liver failure? We have scarcity of data for transplantation and indication, but patients with ACLF 1 and 2 have similar outcomes um, for those who have no organ failure at the time of transplantation. Another interesting concept is the concept of liver transplantation and the futility of trans transplantation. An interesting study uh, made by a panel of 35 uh, inter international experts were um, uh, trying to define specific criteria for postponing and denying liver transplantation. And uh, they said that criteria which were once uh, uh, absolute contraindication are now relative like frailty and persistent fever less than 72 uh, hours of appropriate antimicrobial therapy in case of ongoing sepsis. They recommended the patient graph survival at one year after liver transplant to define futility, and they considered contraindication based on severity of organ dysfunctions, PO2 to FiO2 ratio under 150 norepinephrine over one microgram per kilo per minute, and the serum lactate labor at the high above nine milliliters per uh, millimoles per liters. They also showed an algorithm for fertility and liver transplantation, which was very important. 
Anyhow, the conclusions are that in the new era, the anesthesiologist must face very difficult changes and he became not better, but the best. Thank you very much for your attention.